can take a, a stock trigger, a heavier trigger, and you can do well with that. You can shoot it accurately, and then you can also shoot it fast. But you're not going to shoot it as fast and accurately combined as what you will with a lighter, more manageable trigger. So Robin not only shoots with a lot of Glocks, he lends his name to some of the trigger systems as well. Um, I've, I used to be a trigger snob. Uh, I, I still kind of am. So what goes into the, the thought process when, you, when you're putting together your thoughts on what I want this trigger to do? And, and, and what's the ultimate goal behind that trigger? Well, the, the ultimate goal really is, is, is just having a, a, a lighter trigger. Okay. I mean, <laughs> the hardest part about shooting a handgun is trigger control. And I always tell people two things. Um, when you're shooting, it's, it's two factors. Number one, the, the faster that you go. And number two, the heavier and, and the more poundage and pressure you have to apply with your finger. Mm -hmm. The more you do those two things, the more apt you are to, to basically flinch, to move the other fingers, the rest of your hand as you're pulling the trigger. Uh, no doubt about it, it's the hardest thing. And so having a lighter trigger, it just, it just lessens that. It's, it's not going to be magic. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you're in the competition arena like me and I'm, I'm measuring things down to the hundredth of a second, you know, how fast I can do these things, and you start to see black and white, man, this is better. Yeah. You know, I, I can shoot with a three-pound trigger versus a four-pound trigger versus a five-pound trigger. I can just do this about maybe 3% better yeah. or, or whatever it might be. I can, you can still shoot, yeah. you know, fine. But the difference between winning and losing, I mean, I've, We're talking split I've won in lost <laughs> nationals by a tenth of a second. Jesus. One tenth of one second across three days. I've, I've been on both ends of that. So <laughs> you're, we're always trying to do something you can get a little better. That's, that's nuts. That's, the fact that it's that close, we're talking about such a micro increment of it's time. Been, I mean, it's not always that close, but it's definitely been, been that, that close. close before. So, so yeah. it's, it's so now, but... The, you clearly you've carried a gun on duty. Um, yeah. the, the big controversial topic of, you know, sure. do you put a modified trigger in your carry gun? Do you not? Would you carry the gun that you compete with? So forth and so on. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, no, that's a good question. I, I think you're starting to see uh, guys do more. It, it be more acceptable to make your gun easier to shoot better. I mean, yeah. why is that a bad thing? In my mind, it's it's almost no different than putting a, a scope on a rifle or, or, or whatnot. But what I tell people though, is you have to be, it's all about what you're trained for. So I know everybody's scared, the whole liability thing, right? They're going to accidentally shoot somebody. Well, either it's going to come down to either you meant to shoot somebody or you didn't. And, and what are you trained on? <laughs> yeah. If you are trained on a five pound trigger and that's all you've ever shot. And then somebody hands you a gun with a three pound trigger. Yeah, of course. That's going to, it's going to maybe yeah. go off a little bit early. You're not, you're not trained on that. Your sensitivity level is not set to that trigger. However, if you put the same amount of training in with that gun with a three-pound trigger, your sensitivity level can be the same. And you can have no more danger of that going off in a three-pound trigger than you know, somebody else with a five. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's definitely a, a, a training issue there. But I, I, what I've seen is some of, the, some of these departments, typically it only happens when the guy in charge is a gun guy. And that you don't get that a lot in the administration and yeah. and cost. But I've seen I, I I won't name them specifically, but I know some that they are actually allowed. Okay, you, you can bring this trigger down. Nothing crazy, nothing yeah. stupid, but definitely an improvement over the stock trigger on those. So gotcha. I, I definitely think at the end of the day, you know, it's it's about performance, and you know, that's to me that's the most important thing. <laughs> and you know, it's, it it blows my mind because. You would think, like, I remember, I don't know if they're still carrying it. You, do you know if the, the cops in New York are still running the 12-pound trigger pulls? I've always heard that. I'm not sure if it's if it's still there, but, yeah, I, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's, <laughs> and, 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 and clearly, it, it, it's, it's, it's a result of people making laws who don't understand the, the notion of firearms and how they work. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then yeah. you wonder why the same cops are pulling shots from five feet away yeah. and completely. And I mean, I personally think it could go the other way. Is it, yeah. is it more dangerous? It's actually could be a liability the other way. You know, yeah. he's more apt to miss and hit somebody else standing behind him. Yeah, no, you no, know? seriously. But then I think also what, what, what comes into play also is they, they don't, because they don't take the time to actually engage the community and understand the things that we teach in the community, they would understand yeah. that. I think they're they're thinking about it from a perspective of, okay, this cop's gonna have this gun. If he has his gun out drawn on a suspect, he's gonna have his finger on the trigger. So we wanna make it as hard as possible for him to shoot it unless he, he deliberately wants to shoot. Not realizing yeah. that in our community, we teach you to keep your finger off of the trigger until you're actually ready to shoot, which kind of yeah. makes the whole notion of a light trigger pull in some respects null and void. <laughs> Exactly. And that's just it's what it's always going to come down to. The vast majority of the people that are going to have a say in that are going to have little to no knowledge yeah. 
about anything like that. It's just, unfortunately, that's the way it is. Now, um, I think the, another thing we kind of touched on a little bit was the, the notion of modifying your carry gun and the liability issue revolving around it. And I think there was this kind of common idea that you don't want to modify your gun that you carry because if you ever have to use it in a situation, they're going to use that against you. Um, and I, I know where it came from. Um, that notion came from um, from Masada Ayub. He, he, yeah. he, you know, he was an expert testifier. And um, I'm, I'm going to go on a soapbox real quick. <laughs> and, and so I think um, he he pointed out a, he pointed out a particular case where the prosecutor tried to use the fact that the gun was modified uh, to make their point that he wanted to shoot the person when he shouldn't have. Um, he's not saying that if you modify your gun, automatically the courts are going to look at you and say, you know what, you wanted to kill someone. You didn't weren't defending yourself. You just wanted to kill someone. That's not the case. Prosecutors grasp at straws all of the time to yeah, try to, you know, go yeah. <laughs> so um, I think I think a lot of people kind of misconstrue what Masada was trying to get at, and it created this like culture of fear where you don't modify your guns. I remember when my friend found out that I was carrying a modified Glock. And he almost lost his mind. Yeah. He was like, why would you do that? You're a lawyer. I mean, that's probably why I do it, because I know what the true implications yeah. of it could be. Uh, so, yeah, so that, that was my little soapbox about modifying triggers and so forth. Now, no, I definitely I know. What you, I mean, it, it's there, there's an argument for, for both ways. Uh, I mean, it's just I don't know. Either <laughs> on one end, you're, you're just you're scared to death of liability. Yeah. Uh, or on the other end, you're, you know, putting yourself out there a little bit more, but maybe you're a little more prepared. Yeah. You know, I, I want to be on that side. That's exactly. just me. Now, how, how important do you think confidence in your gun um, is to somebody who does concealed carry or even somebody like you who was a cop who was, who was a street cop at one point? Um, having the confidence in, in the fact that I know I'm familiar with this gun. I know what this gun does. Um, I think people tend to undervalue that. Yeah. I mean, if you're ever going to perform in a real situation, Everything to do with the gun has got to be totally automatic. Gotcha. You know, if yeah. you ever have to think about, I got to do this, I got to hold the gun this way or pull the trigger. Or if you draw the gun, you, you're done. It's yeah. not going to happen for you. Got to be so much that it's just, just like you don't have to think about how to, when you walk, you, you know, I don't think oh, I got to put my right foot out, my left yeah. foot out. My, you know, it's the same thing. <laughs> the same thing with the gun. Yeah. And so, you know, having confidence in it uh, and your ability to, to use it, obviously, that that's huge. And I think that, you know, just even myself, some of the things that I was involved in, and even just on a SWAT team doing raids and, yeah. and some things like, I think I had more confidence because I don't think I'm Superman, but like, I know I feel confident. I, if something comes up, I feel I can handle it. And and so I think maybe my stress level was lower because of that. So yeah, uh, definitely a big thing. Now, when you were on duty, what, what did you carry? Uh, well, for most of the time that I was there, uh, we had an issue gun. There's a whole backstory to that. Flight <laughs> administration. Most of the time I was there, I had to carry a, a Sig Pro 2340, a 40 cal. It's like a cheap Sig. Gotcha. And so the last there's such a thing. Probably what's that? There's such a thing as a cheap Sig. <laughs> well, <laughs> <joking>. cheaper Sig. <laughs> um, and then the last couple of years I had to carry an MMP. So okay. Basically, our whole department wanted Glocks, but the chief, who was not a shooter. Um, did not know too much about shooting. Probably the least on the department. Jesus. Of course, it's going to be what he wants. And right. some of it was because I think maybe he 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 knew I wanted a Glock, so he wasn't going to do it <laughs> personally. I can say that now. He's no longer the chief. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do, so ideally, if you were going to carry, I, I guess I'm I'm going to step out here and assume it would be a Glock. Um, if you had your if you had your choice, what, what Glock in particular would you carry? And why? Actually, now that I am auxiliary now, uh -huh. auxiliary is under different rules, so we carry whatever we want. So the gun that I carry now on duty when I go in, which is not a lot, uh -huh. is the same gun that I won my first nationals with in, in 2007. It's it's a Glock 35. Really? So it's it's a bit it's a real gun. It's a big gun. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I either go one end of the spectrum or the other. I either carry the Glock 35 or uh -huh. it's a titanium Smith revolver in my pocket. Gotcha. Uh, now it's one of those two when I carry. Now, now, why that gun in particular? Is there any particular reason why above and beyond the fact that that was the gun you're, you use for your competition? Is there any particular aspects of the 35, like say, for instance, aside, like compared to, say, a 17? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's a, a 40, a 9 and a 40. Uh, to, to the vast majority of people, I would recommend a 9 overall. They'll shoot it a little bit better. It's a little cheaper. The 40... It's got a little more pop to it. Uh -huh. It's going to matter so much more where you hit somebody or whatnot yeah. as far as what it is. I realize that. <clears throat> but it's... It's got a little more. It's got a little more pop, and the 35 is a bigger gun. Yeah. Um, when you take its counterpart, uh, a, a 22 actually. Yeah. When you go from 
a Glock 22 to 35, you act like you don't know this, but you actually get about two more ounces of weight in the slide and it makes the gun softer. Mm. Now the nine millimeter is not that way. When you go from a 17 to a 34, it's actually the same slide weight. Gotcha. So, so the gun is, is a little bit heavier and it's a little bit softer. Some people to shoot, some people think it's like, Oh, it's a, such a big gun. I'm thinking about it. Okay. It's three quarters of an inch longer uh -huh. than a 17. Is that huge? I mean, <laughs> if you carry it outside on, on an outside holster, I don't think it's a huge deal. Now, I'm going I'm to say something. I'm probably going to end up embarrassing myself because you're probably going to be more of an expert on this than I am. Now, I, I, I like to shoot fast. Um, I, I have noticed that I tend to shoot guns with smaller slides. Not overly small, but say, for instance, if you were to give me, say, a 34 and then mm -hmm. versus, say, a 19, I feel like the I, I feel like the gun cycling faster with the 19 than it does with the 34 because you're dealing with the smaller mass in on the slide. Um, sure. am, am I making any sense right now? Yeah, no, that that makes sense. And a lot of guys, especially on more of the steel guns, will, will lighten the slide. Uh, the idea, and I, I get that. The idea is that okay, if you have a lighter slide, the reciprocating mass is is less, so the slide cycles faster, gets back on target faster, you shoot faster. That's the theory. And the gun does cycle faster. However, in tests that I've done myself, mm -hmm. uh, I don't shoot any faster with it. Okay. Just because a heavier slide cycles slower, it's still cycling a lot faster, faster than, than you're I able can to pull the trigger. Yeah, gotcha. So, okay. and and on on closer targets, I, I can see how. You no, know, I I totally understand what you what you feel there sometimes. Uh, where it makes a difference is on the harder shots. If I'm just shooting full size targets, five yards, ten yards, maybe even fifteen. Yeah fast, not so much. And you start shooting plates, eight inch plates at 25 yards and partial target. And you're trying to do that fast. And, yeah. and that the, the lighter gun, it's just, it's more violent. And it, yeah, it's, you're right. that is me, true. Yeah. It, it shows up and, and it's, you know, when I actually really measure performance, um, on those targets, I'm better with, with a little bigger, heavier gun. Okay. Um, we're going to take a quick break real quick, but before we take that break, I want to ask one question. Um, you talked about how at one point they switched over to you guys carrying the M&P. Um, when you guys were carrying the M&P, was it in 40? It was. It was. Yeah. Now, quick question. I Did you notice the M&P handled the 40 round really well? I feel like the M&P is an oddly particularly soft shooting gun when it's in 40. Was it? Um, I, I didn't notice myself. It, and I'm not nearly as familiar with the M&Ps as I am with, with the with Glocks. The, gotcha. Uh, if, if they put more weight on with because it, it, mine wasn't a long slide, it was a normal, it was normal slide. slide. Okay. So I, I guess myself, I didn't notice any difference between that versus versus the Glock. Really, I think it's just a little bit heavier than a and then, uh, the than Glock. A, a couple ounces, maybe. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah, that was just a question of curiosity that I had. All right. Well, we're gonna take another quick break, and we'll come back and do some more talking. All right.